This is video number 11 now in our uh, Topics in Linear Algebra from digital-university.org. And we're starting to accumulate now more and more videos. And quite frequently, you're going to hear us referring back to some of the previous videos that we made. And if you just found us on YouTube, um, some of those previous videos might be shotgunned all over the place. If you can get to the website, there you'll find the playlist for all the videos, and they'll be presented for you there um, in their proper order. Now, in the last video, we were discussing non-singular matrices, and we pointed out, as you did in other videos as well, that it, when you have a non-singular matrix and you're trying to reduce it to row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, the diagonal elements will never be zero. Because what happens is, as you're trying to get it in, in echelon form, and if one of the diagonal elements does come out to be zero, then what happens is eventually you're going to have a row that has, consists entirely of zeros, which means you're going to have free variables, which means no unique solutions. Therefore, it's not a non-singular matrix. So what we can do, of course, is as we are taking it through the Gaussian elimination process, we can make these number entries into zero. And of course, we do that by multiplying the first row by some constant and adding to this row the same thing here. And we can make this zero. Then we can add this, well, we actually, would, the easier way to do it would be to add this row to this row, multiplying this by some number, so that now this is 0. Then we can do it again, multiply this by some number, add it to here, so that this is 0. And then we can also make this number 0, multiply this row by some number, add it to here, and this becomes 0. Now, as we do that, of course, these numbers will change. But the point is, they're all constants. So what we can do at this stage of the game, of course, is whatever number this is, divide through by this number. So the first row is this. Whatever number we ended up with on the diagonal, divide through by that number. So we have this, and same thing here. So what we are saying is that by performing our standard row operations, that is, multiplying through by a constant, or multiplying one row by a constant and adding to another row, or maybe exchanging the position of two rows, we can take a non-singular matrix and go through those row operations, and you end up with the identity matrix. And that's very important because that also tells us how we can find the inverse matrix. So let's say this was matrix A that we started off with when we had it written in general form. Etc. across here and here. Same, same deal as we had it before we um, went through the Gaussian elimination process. So we had a matrix A and what we did was we performed a series of operations on it with the elementary matrices. Whenever we switch two rows or multiply by a constant, one row by a constant, or multiply one row by a constant, add it to another row, those are the functions of elementary matrices, which we discussed in the previous videos. So what it means is that we take our matrix and we multiply it by a series of elementary matrices and we end up with is the identity matrix. I don't mean E squared, E cubed, and so forth. I just want to mean that here is a 
one elementary matrix, this is a second elementary matrix, this is a third one, and we do a bunch of them to finally we have the identity matrix. Okay, now let's take this equation, since A is non-singular, it has an inverse, let's multiply both sides by its inverse, and look what we have. We'll have this, times A, times A inverse, equals I times A inverse. Well, A times A inverse, that's just I. So let's just write I in here. I times A inverse, that's just A inverse, because, that's, because it's the identity matrix, and that's what the identity matrix does. So look what happened. We started with matrix A, and we multiply it by a series of elementary matrices. Well, those same elementary matrices, if they operate on the identity matrix, it gives us the inverse of matrix A. So this here tells us how we can find the inverse of a matrix. And let's just take a simple example to demonstrate how that's done. Let's say that we have this matrix. 5, 2, 3, 1. What is this determinant? It's going to be 5 minus 6 negative 1, the determinant is not 0, therefore it's a non-singular matrix. We want to know is, all right, what's the inverse this non, of this non-singular matrix? Well, we partition off, and on this side we write the identity matrix. Then, using our row operations, we want to go ahead and get this in reduced echelon form. Actually, it's going to come out to be the identity matrix. First thing we do, make this 1. So we divide through by 5. So we have 1, 3 fifths, 1 fifth, 0. Of course, this will be unchanged. Okay, let's write this a little bit neater. Now we want to make this 0. So we imagine multiplying the first row by minus 2 and then go ahead and adding it to the second row. So all these numbers stay unchanged. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. That will be minus 6 fifths, plus 1 is 5 fifths, this will give us minus 1 fifth. Minus 2 fifths plus 0, that's minus 2 fifths. Minus 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1, that stays 1. So we have this. Now, we can multiply through across here by minus 5. This would be 1, 2, and that would be minus 5 then. So multiply through by minus 5, this becomes 1. This is 2. This would be minus 5. Okay, now we want to make this 0. So we have to multiply across this row by minus 3 fifths and then add. So these numbers will stay unchanged. When I say multiply across by minus 3 fifths, of course we just do that in our imaginations. So this is 0, 1, 2, minus 5. And we want to keep things in focus. Okay, 
multiply through by minus three-fifths and add to this row. That will be zero, zero plus one is still one. Minus three-fifths plus three-fifths, that's zero. Here we have, this would be minus six-fifths then, plus one-fifth, this becomes minus one. And here we have minus five-fifths times minus three-fifths, that becomes plus three, plus zero is three. Okay, there we have it. Here we have the identity matrix, and this is the inverse of what we started with. What did we start with? This. And now we claim its inverse is minus one, two, three, minus five. So let's check that. Here we have five, two, three, one, minus one, two, three, minus five. Okay, go across and down. Minus five plus six, that's plus one. Go across and down. Minus two plus two, that's zero. Again, go across and down. Fifteen minus fifteen, that's zero. Go across and down. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1. It gives us the identity matrix. So indeed, this matrix is the inverse of that matrix. And what did we do? While we were taking this to reduced echelon form, actually down to the identity matrix, those same row operations were transferring the identity matrix into the inverse of this one. And why is that true? Again, as we discussed, is that when you have a matrix A, if it's non-singular, you can multiply it by a series of elementary matrices Now these are not exponents, it just simply indicates I multiply one elementary matrix and a second and a third and so forth, we end up with the identity matrix. Then what we can show is multiply both sides of the equation by A inverse and lo and behold, whoops, this should be E, is that the same series of elementary matrices operate on the identity matrix to give us the inverse. And then here is where we applied this technique right here. Okay, um, in the next video we're going to talk about the properties of column space and row space of matrices. And then after that we have another video concerning linearly independent vectors and dimensions and bases and so forth. And then the video after that will be concerned with the null space of a matrix. And finally, with that background, uh, we can discuss how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors and how to diagonalize a matrix. So stay with us. Hopefully that this material has some help for you. We'll get some more background information. Then soon we'll start solving some more problems.